Okay. okay. All right, good stuff. Single elimination, two out of three matches. So, we are, and we are underway. Officially. So we're live, guys, here with Twitch TV, backslash Game Underground. Dragon Guy gets the first hit. But Makoto keeping her out. It's, it's really going to come down to who gets the first knockdown. Yeah. Both characters have such strong mix-ups. Yeah, and it's totally momentum-based. So basically, Absolutely. after that knockdown gets underway, you and know, it's anyone's oh, game. in the corner. That is a bad place for Dragon Guy to be. So Kevin's uh, up. Oh. He's, ba he's basically telling Dragon Guy, why are you pushing buttons? Exactly. Oh, he's been doing that. Kevin Tech off to a very strong start Definitely. here. Showing Dragon God. I think perhaps Dragon God might have underestimated him. Yep. And now it looks like Dragon God is tightening himself up a little bit. He's recovering. It is very possible that Dragon God underestimated him. And then at some point he'll start his down exactly. And perhaps hopefully he'll be able to emerge from that because this is kind of demoralizing for our player and stuff. You know, start off right. a game, even though this is just a 5 1 5 exhibition match, you know, he's like, wow, what happened to me? There's a lot of pride on the line. So there's always been a very strong rivalry between New York and Boston. Right. And, you know, that was sort of the, the tagline of this whole tournament is, you know, come beat Boston's best if you can. Exactly. And, uh, you know, this is, it's it's not just money, it's also pride. Definitely a sense of uh, pride and bragging rights. Exactly. And you can be sure that whoever, whoever wins, whoever loses, hopefully we can see them back at the next game of the tournament spectacular. I would definitely be counting on that. Absolutely. So Kevin uh, takes the first round. Yep. Dragon uh, guys have a small uh, health lead ahead of Kevin. But again, it really, you know, in this matchup, it really can go either way. It's just really off of one knockdown. Yep. Having a life lead only means you don't need to hold. Exactly. Oh, so, oh. God, yes, yeah, that counted totally. Good. Really good read on his point. Absolutely. Excellent. And now it's about even, but Makoto's got a rookie in the corner. This is where he can get some real damage. Gets the knockdown, pushes almost. That's the thing that amazes me about Makoto. She can push so far from yes. the stage. It's almost inevitable that you're going to wind up in the corner. And or something. her offensive momentum is just really scary, you know. You know, when I, when I first think to give that matchup, I, I frankly I'm just intimidated by her just because she, she can just, you know, she hits like a man. Okay? Exactly. So you don't want her in your zone because once she gets there, it's very hard to get her out. Yeah. And I mean, as is the case with many Vortex and mix up based characters, but Makoto in particular, um, I think is not necessarily slept on, but not widely used. There aren't a lot of Makoto players around, yeah. so it's hard to get matchup experience and exposure to what she can do. And, um, you know, it's just, I think she's she's gonna be a strong character. I've been saying that yeah. since Super. So hopefully Kevin can, uh, I, I know Kevin's been rising up through the ranks locally. Yeah, he, de he definitely has a really strong, uh, strong display this weekend. But, Dra Dragon, Dragon Guy is just trying very hard to mount an offensive, but yep, he got his mix up there. He got his jumps to cancel, so great job there. Yeah. And that's don't understand exactly how difficult it is to jump cancel it, in the it, yeah. it is obscenely difficult. Definitely. So Dragon God actually now taking round one. And can he keep that momentum going? You know he's going to be excited after hitting you a like that. It definitely will do a lot of great things for overall his, his overall confidence for this, already being down one game. Sloppy back dash there from Kevin. Gets him tagged a couple more times. But again, there he goes. The, right the, the great thing is that the both players honestly are showing uh, good signs of respect, but at the same time, they're not afraid to actually take any risks. Exactly. They, they're, they're really bringing their A game, and at the same time, you know, they are, they're, they're not going to be doing gimmicky, no, you know, no, no. This is, as much as it's an exhibition, they're not, they're not basically saying, you know what, I'm going to stop them, just, just for the sake of entertaining the crowd. Right. You know, they just don't want to take that risk. So good job to Dragon God. It is now tied 1-1. And I think that uh, that double dash at the end there from Kevin, he dashed up twice and whipped the command. I'm sure he would have gotten some damage off of that. Just, you know, unlucky break. It was a good read by Dragon God to get Definitely. that back dash. And here we go for the first elimination. And once again, they seem to start every round kind of feeling each other out, staying at about half screen yep. and throwing some, throwing out some footsies, throwing some pokes. You know, and and, and, and it's, like, it's like once they, once one person gets, uh, you know, gets that hit confirmed, then they can actually know it's like a whole chunk of damage. Being exactly. lost. All of these, all these rounds have been going extremely fast. Definitely. Great job there. Very big combo for Dragon Guy. Oh, nice so he, so it looked better. like now he's starting to, you know, Dragon Guy's starting to get into his flow now. Yes. 
But again, we can't count out Kevin Zach. No, definitely not. It comes down to that one mix-up. One yep. mix-up can absolutely make the difference in this matchup. Yeah. And this is where it's going. This is where it's really going to matter. Is if yeah. Kevin can make that adjustment and make it happen. And like you said before, these are both vortex-based characters and such. So that's why it can go either way. Um, looks like Dragon God might be able to take this, but I'm not ready to discount Kevin just yet. But he has a very healthy, healthy against uh, Kevin right now. Right. And here we go. He's got so the So this looks like what match point generate? may very well go in Dragon God's favor, but again, ooh, a very lucky call. So, awesome. Good read. Good that was a very good read, and it is almost even. He has about roughly 30% more health, wow. and now, just like that, Kevin is in there. Wow. Unbelievable. In our first match. Unbelievable with Kevin. Kevin basically said, you know what, I am not going quietly. You are going to hear my name. Exactly. Wow. Big chop. He said, here, here you go. Have a, have a chunk of this. There's, again, the damage, it just swings so heavily in both directions. Absolutely. A good block from Kevin there on that cross-up. But he's now in the corner. He's in a very tough position. Another Definitely good tough. block. It looks like he's figured Definitely. out that cross-up. He knows what is, what's coming next. Yep. Go, shooting for the overhead. Nice read on that. Kevin gets him into the corner, and here we go. This is, oh, gets thrown in the corner himself, and he misses the... Oh, uh, so he actually blocked that. So he missed that. Yep. That looks like that's going to be it, extra right there. This could be it. Ah, just like that. So Massachusetts is now up. <laughs> As you can see there, Massachusetts They are definitely high. They are on their feet. Everyone is excited. Now, we're going to have a little trouble here. I'll let the audience know the secret. We don't have headsets, so we can't hear each other through the yes. lights. If we say completely disjointed things, it is because we can't hear each other. Absolutely. So now, up next for New York, now we have Kevin Tech versus Craig. We're getting some love from uh, Mr. Fade Dash, who pulled in second place on Persona. Shout outs to him. Yes, absolutely. I'm hoping to be able to talk to him a little later. And so, uh, try to do my best to be able to talk to all the players as much as possible, not just talk to the Street Fighter community, because naturally, there are other communities that came out. So I'm really right. impressed with Jamie Davis, that diversity there. Right. So we are going to see Guy from Craymore, which I, if I was to guess, I would have guessed Guy. I know he's yeah. got a very strong guy. Definitely. Um, I can't necessarily say it's his strongest character, but I can't say that he's got much competition. And this matchup, I'm very curious about because Guy, I would say, is I'd much really quicker. He's, he's much quicker than Makoto yeah. to get in and to stay in. Um, they both have command throws. Right. But Guy, I think what it's going to come down to is Guy's floaty jump. If Kramor's not careful, uh, Kevin, he's, he showed in that first match he can anti-air with the ultra. Right. If Kramor's not careful, he's going to get tagged a lot. But, you know, obviously these are top level players. Not gonna Absolutely. Jumps, you you know, know, Guy has a lot of great tools that actually allows him to control multiple areas of space, not only horizontally, but also in the air. This is motion air throw. Right. So, you know, Kevin basically has to be very careful against Guy. I think if Kevin goes into the air, he's going to be in a lot more trouble than if Kramer goes into yes, the air. Absolutely. Because, you know, again, having an air throw that does as much dangerous. damage as, as the, uh, the Azuna drop, yes. it's, it's just a tough situation to be in. And now Kevin in the corner. Kramer trying to capitalize, getting a couple of tick throws. Yeah, so you got a little scoops there and actually start off that pressure and about to reset the positioning. Now, I think there he's... Oh, wow. I think so, he could have probably followed up on the, um, the uppercut, right. but I think he chose to get out of the corner instead. Yeah. You know, you know what you wish to see? It's very smart. So I don't actually, know if he meant to let him out right there, but you know what? He's. I'm also not sure how I feel about using that super. Yeah. This, that's a, it's, that's uh, an interesting decision from Kevin. It was kind of rare and surprising to see that. Yeah. I, I, again, we don't see a lot of Makoto players in general, but no. even fewer use the super because her EX moves are so powerful. Yeah. And he does turn around. And it's somewhat, somewhat disappointing if he had used the super but couldn't yeah. pull out the round. It was definitely more potent than third strike, but here it's, it's like, you know, I don't know if it had the same type of effectiveness. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a fair call. Yeah. Ooh, All right, so Greenmore basically break. says, no, you know what, I'm not trying to hear that. <laughs> and just corner, like that, now he's back in the corner. Oh, and this took off a substantial amount of energy so right there. Look at that health. So wow. 
Managing to work his way out of the corner. Texas yep, nice throw. Good job there. Oh, wow. Look at that. Wow. Kevin is doing an excellent Kevin job beating his opponent and getting those focuses. He is definitely doing work. I'm not sure if that was whipping for grab. I'm sorry, Hard whipping for meter, but a uh, strange decision. He could have just been trying to do a race and just test to see if he was paying attention. Kramer will take the first so match. Kramer taking first match. Good stuff. But this one will definitely go. Again, it's another it, it, match. It can, can go away. Away. It can go away. It was not free. No. Makoto giving a good showing. Looks like we're having some uh, perhaps friendly banter, perhaps unfriendly banter between yeah, the players. So he's, so he's like, you know, wait, talking wait, shop. Think, what, are you thinking in a body? Now, I'm curious. Once we get uh, once we get the Stevens brothers up there, uh, I know that they have a. Uh, a uh, long-standing reputation for being loud. Yes. Uh, hopefully we can we can have some of that, get some friendly rivalry going. I think I should be that one, you know, one of those mom and pie type of pop-offs and stuff, you know, with this or one of those. And uh, Kramer here quickly gets Makoto into the corner, working on a perfect, but Makoto oh, breaks right out. So much for uh, getting peed on there. <laughs> we had Snoop Dogg for uh, second tag. R. Kelly may not make an appearance. Yeah, he may not. Oh, well, that's kind of disappointing. <laughs> Smart dash wow. out there. Really good offensive pressure there on Primo's part. And just like that, he's now up one game. Very tight block string there at the end. I'm pretty sure there was nothing Kevin could have done. Yeah, this might be match point, but you know what? Ooh, All it takes is one good read from Kevin. And so good stuff just like that. And now Kevin putting his mark, and now he just reversed. Kevin gets out of the corner. This is a good position for him to be in. Absolutely. And, and wow, he's hitting. I got, the, got the knockdown. I think a lot of the Hoda players don't get enough credit for how uh, the, uh, the charge on cancel. Because a lot of people say, oh, you need to have Viper-like execution because, yeah. you know, doing feints of seismos or of the, the Thunder Knuckle. Right. But with Makoto, you got to do the same thing. And Kevin's showing that there. He can do strong, cancel it into a charge punch, and then cancel that to just get a safe stance strong. Yeah. Kevin goes for another focus there, but uh, does not pay off for him. Yeah, he, he, he definitely was trying to connect something much more substantial than that, but he wasn't able to connect. And I know he's going to probably look for the next opportunity if he's able to get out of this offensive pressure. Yeah, that's Kevin a pretty is, good opportunity for him. And again, like we said, that air-to-air -air battle, I think it's going to go in it's guys' It's really scary, definitely. He hasn't really had much, too much opportunity to, to do it as much because a lot has been taking place on the ground. And I think that Kevin knows that, you know, guys probably will control the skies right. more than he can. There you are! And there it is! And it looks like that's going to be it. So Kevin is basically just telling him, yeah, you know, you guys need to hold that, okay? My Makoto is going to put on work. Exactly. So, and you see, you see Craig getting excited there, standing up, giving some uh, some trash talk, looking around for someone to have an answer. And we will, uh, we will see how this continues. I, I'm not prepared to say that it's going to be an OCV, but so far, you know, it's... If Kevin can keep this up, he has what it takes, I would say. I, I would say, you know, he, he's definitely very proficient in his pokes and about his spacing. Most importantly, his punishments, which a lot of players, especially in tournaments, they tend to overlook. You know? They tend to do a lot what I call chicken pecking. They don't really maximize the damage. Right. Kevin is not doing that. Kevin basically makes sure that he maximizes on every hit. He's not dropping his combos, and that's why he's making count. That's why he's basically staying on top. He's also not afraid. He's having a lot of luck with the EX, um, I think it's called Paracusa, the choke yes. grab. Uh, he's having a lot of luck just sort of throwing that, right. and either Kramer or dashes out of it, or he'll dash into it. Oh, oh wow. When he when he hit stand strong I, instead of the ultra, I was but not he dashed expecting under that. and got the choke. A very close game I, I here. Just, I wasn't expecting that. This is going to come down to the next poke, really. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. He said, "You know what? I'm gonna let it rip." He, again, he's not afraid. He's he is not afraid. He, is not afraid. he says, "You know, you know, scared. I'm coming in." He's, he's just gonna throw his. Amazing so job. 10 seconds in, he's already, already taken up half of his life, and I think I think Kramer is just mindful. Absolutely, with this kind of life lead from Makoto, this is uh, a good for Kevin. Uh oh, could this be know. a perfect? I don't know what guy can do to get out of here. Oh my wow. god! Wow! So oh, it looks like R. Kelly has just made an appearance. Absolutely. 
Chiefs is on him Dan, right now. Dan, Dan is getting hyped. He is so hyped right Everyone now. Everyone excited here. Unbelievable. That's I'd, so, I'd be curious if New York is starting to get a little nervous. I think, I think that they are. You know, I think it was really wise that Lucky chose Kevin to actually be, you know, the lead it off. Because and that, that fifth spot, we weren't sure who it was going to be. Yep. And I think that it he is He was the wild card. He's definitely paying off. A very good decision and people, from Boston. Like you said before, people definitely sleep on McCono. They yes. sleep on her. They consider her somewhat as an underrated character, and you don't really see her tend to show up in a lot of tournaments. You know? So uh, EMP is definitely probably like considering now strategically what they're going to do for their next match. And you know, I'm I'm thinking here. I don't know what characters really have favorable matchups against the Coda. I see. I no, guess she's just Dyson really would probably have a you know an okay time, but she's got the axe kick yeah. that can you know she can get in and over over Dawson's footsies. I really can't think of any character that would just have an easy time with Makoto. Yeah, and, and I would I would go on a record basis say she's not really a high risk character as such because she makes up for it just by the pokes that she does. Exactly. You know, those folks basically help her to. Uh, to actually make up for her positioning, get her in there, and basically just establish the true damage that she wants. So she ends up throwing out a lot of red herrings. Yeah. You know? And she just deals so much damage, and you know, while her walk speed is slow, her dash is so potent. And again, Kevin's showing that. He can dash up and EX grab, and then go right into Ultra, and there's probably something about 500 damage right yeah, there. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just the type of thing you just don't want to be really giving up. You know, you have to respect the amount of damage that she can do with you. You have to keep her up. Right? It's not even an option. There is, I've seen a shirt that is, it's just a plain silhouette of Makoto, um, and it just says, don't get hit. Yeah. And, you know, that's, it's very true. A lot of people, when they think of mix-up characters, they think uh, uh, Akuma, yeah. Ibuki. Are we going to see Oni from Sanford? That would be interesting. You know, they really should just rename uh, Makoto to Akane from Ramo and Half, because, <laughs> you know, she does, she always just hit hard in that series. And, you know, and those, those poor characters and stuff, they just always suffer from rap. So Absolutely. We're, we're definitely going to see that. And it'll be interesting as a character pick that Sanford is going with Pony. I, yeah, I would have I would have believed he was going to go with Sagat. I expected that. But we will see what happens. We, we, you know, unless, unless he's, he's trolling us, or just, you know, I would not expect him to you know, start off with this. I mean, he he clearly knows what he's doing. He's a very well no, no, he's very respected player. Yeah. I would just say I'm yeah. very surprised by this selection. Perhaps he knows something about this matchup. He might there. very well, you know, because, because the thing about Oni and stuff, you know, the only real person that we've seen out there that tend to utilize uh, Oni was uh, was Kamui, actually, for a while. But briefly, before that, you know, some of the tournaments that were held at Big Two was uh, Chris Hu. Chris Hu. I was going to say Henry Sam, but you're right. Chris Hu. Um, I remember when uh, when AE first dropped, there was um, some tournament in Boston, I, I forget the name, but it was, you know, Chris Hu was there playing Oni, and he yeah. was just running training. And I thought he was trolling and stuff, you know, he saw that Oni come on the characters, and then one day he just shows up in a tournament, he's breaking on Oni and doing it work. You know? Exactly. And here we go, like well, and like we said, it's all really paying off for Sanford, he's got Absolutely. a round on Kevin, and it was a fairly convincing win. Yeah. Kevin and not getting the opportunity to you know, sort of do what he wants oh. to do and deal the damage. The great, the great thing about Oni is that Oni is uh, is a much faster, uh, an orthodox version of Akuma. You know, it's not even fair to say he's a clone. He actually has a number of unique tools that makes him a distinct character. And one of them is just how fast his fireball speeds actually come out, and that's actually how he's able to keep Makoto at range right now. But, see, I was thinking about that. Oni does have those fast fireballs, but so does Sagat. And I'm curious what else Oni has that would keep Makoto at bay better than Sagat. Uh, maybe it's the DP. It, ver it very well could be. But oh, you know, that's good also a good move, too. Good mix that up. if you don't really know when it's coming out, that can just crush you over days. Even when you know it's coming out, yes. it's still approximately a 50 50 mix up. You have time to react and switch your block, and you can poke him out of it as he's coming towards you. Um, Again, as a, as a Chun player, I know that Crouch is strong. If I see that coming, I just hit Crouch strong and beat it all day. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, the point being that you can mix that up either way. Right. So, Sanford takes the first round. I'm sorry, first match. And it looks and like. Kevin uh, here with a strong start. It looks like maybe he just needed that out. So, he get the uh, basic. He gets stuck again. So, it sounds like that one might be complete here. Perhaps. Oh, my God. That has got to be doing 
something to San Francisco. That has got to be doing something to San Francisco. Oh right my now. goodness, Kevin was too perfect. He is putting on a show. Absolutely. Unbelievable. Sanford with an answer though. Sanford definitely strong. starting out. Says, you know what? Okay, if you're gonna hit me hard, you know, I'm gonna basically let you know that I still got some teeth. I'll hit you back. And he's doing an action right now. Very big combo. Sanford making his mark. Definitely showing that his bark is definitely as good as his bite. Absolutely. And he gets the he gets a good block on the uh, the cross up. Yes. And he's got him in the corner. He can get some big damage here. Not really what Sanford wants to do. He's just like, you know, like, really? Is this happening? Yeah. Oh, my goodness! Oh, Kevin, wow. Boston is on He is running through Empire Arcadia. Wow. I, regardless, I can say this for an absolute fact, regardless of how this 5v5 turns out, Kevin Tech is showing the world He's definitely that he is showing a strong player. Definitely showing what is going on. You know, when we first like picked this off, I did not imagine that Kevin would be able to, you know, to basically just do what he's doing. Exactly. <laughs> we hear Craig in the audience saying that he's wishing he picked Sagat. I, you know, I, I wonder if he would have did better with Sagat. It's a tough couple. It, it I, really is because they both have the fast fireballs, oh, but the fireballs oh really are playing oh, factor here. Not, absolutely. <laughs> It is without a doubt that Kevin Tech is making his mark. Yes, definitely. He is definitely making his mark. And he is getting all of this room on their feet. And it's, you know, we again, we can't count out New York in any no, way because this is Empire Arcadia we're talking about. Absolutely. But, absolutely. Like I said, regardless of how this turns out, Kevin is making a name for himself right yes. now with this photo. I would I would be surprised. I'm sorry, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing a lot more photo play after this. Kevin's you showing know, what she can do. I, I I would say that's a good assessment. I would think I would imagine as soon as I get home after I'm done playing with DOA, <laughs> I'm gonna turn on AE for a bit, there's gonna be a legion of Makoto players just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> wow! That is the fourth time that Kevin has gotten that focus. He is in the zone. The room, he is totally in the zone. The room is on it. Everyone is on their feet, and Kevin Tech is in the zone. Absolutely amazing. I think it's fair to say he's on fire. He is definitely on fire. He is on fire. Well, I think if we're talking about NBA Jam here, three baskets and you're on fire. Yes. He just hit three and he's on fire. He is on fire. And we have the crowd cheering for an LCD. Wow. Kevin, I think if you look at him, you can tell he knows he's doing well. But he's trying and, you know, and, and he's feeling himself a little bit. You know? yes. I would say that. I say he was feeling himself. But then the problem is he needs to make sure that he's going to keep his head straight. He's got to make sure that he is you know, going to keep it consistent. Right. And make sure that he plays consistently. So coming up next here we have uh, that EMP hero I can't see from here. Uh, I think, yeah, is that, I'm pretty sure that is uh, Jerron because okay, Jerron does have a pension for sitting on the floor. <laughs> so. Oh, all right. Yes, that's Jerron. Now, here's a question. Mm -hmm. I know Jerron plays Bison and Sean. Yes, he does. Probably as two strongest characters. Yes, they are. What do you think his answer is going to be from the color? I would think that he would basically try to start with Bison, and then maybe if he doesn't do well, he might go to Chun. It's just because, as good as he is with Chun Li, she just basically has a difficult time effectively keeping people off when she's knocked down. She doesn't have a lot of great wake up options, and for that, that becomes her downfall. Um, EXSPK is just not really a solid get off anymore. Unfortunately, when you actually doing those safe jumps, it just leaves her at a huge disadvantage. So this is why I believe that Jerron's going to start off trying to feel things out. Going with Bison, I actually would say that he's much more professional with Bison than Absolutely. he is with I, actually, I didn't even know he played Sean for a while. I, yeah. I only learned recently that he played Sean as well. Um, I agree with this decision because Bison can also be in your face, deal that pressure, deal that damage. Right. Um, and he's not going to be at a disadvantage with McCoy on his face. He's got um, EX Cycle Crusher, he's got EX Scissor Kick, he's got a lot of answers for Wake Up Crusher. Definitely does. But apparently that does not seem to face Kevin at all because 13 seconds into the match, 
And Makoto basically said, look, I'm just going to slap you up, you know? So you better be able to have something to uh, just get me out of the zone here. Back in the corner with and Dyson. And I really quick, very, very fast. Just really quick light work of the Ron Swift. That's something I'm used to seeing. I'm uh, now I'm curious. Uh, you've got me thinking. I wonder, uh, regard, you know, depending on how this first match goes, if uh, Kevin manages to get a win off of Jerron, if uh, Jerron is going to switch to Chen, because I think that that matchup is just going to be really tough for him. I would imagine that he would do that, but at this point, you know, if it were me, I, I would probably definitely be sticking with a high damage character, you know, because that's one big caveat for Chen. Chen, unfortunately, just doesn't have the ability to get the type of damage that he's savage. Bison can do that. Bison can do it with very little effort whatsoever. Right. Jerron knows this. Kevin knows this. And he definitely demonstrated that as he just he tied up the, uh, this actual match 1-1. One, one. And Jerron getting that stun, uh, I think this is going to be crunch time for Kevin. If this yes. is going to you know, sort of shake his confidence. Uh, getting stunned and getting vertical are two things that you, know, you really can't underestimate. Them because no, you cannot. It, it definitely gets in your head, regardless of how seasoned you are, how many times you've played. Right. Um, I think back, I, I read an interview with uh, Latif when he played against Pinko. Oh, yes, said, that was good. You know, this character's going to perfect you. You can't let that get to you. <laughs> So I think that we need, you know, that sort of attitude is definitely a good thing to have. Right. And it looks like Kevin manages to do that with great proficiency here, keeping his Makoto alive um, and, you know, keeping Jerron out. But now, again, he's in that corner. It's a tough situation. Yeah. He throws the ultra, but it gets blocked. Do you really think that uh, it was wise for Kevin to basically win with that ultra? Now, the way he just used it there, again, I'm no Makoto player. I don't know a lot about it because there aren't many of, you know, many Makoto players. But it looked, it looked like there he can do that in reaction, not in reaction, but I guess in, more in prediction of a scissor kick. Right. And um, I would assume it would beat it, judging by how he used it there. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really just a question of the ultra one. With, so, so the first thing. Good stuff. I was, I was kind of worried for Jerron there for a while, you know, when he basically let it off and say, you know, like, what's going on here? But it, it may look that uh, Jerron may actually have his number. We'll find out based on this matchup right here. And Kevin, just with no hesitation, jumps right into the next match. Doesn't go to character select, just rematch right away. He wants to keep his momentum going. And the great thing I like about Jerron right now, because typically he is more of a defensive character, but he is definitely riding with the momentum. As soon as he does get to establish it, and he's just basically going in there to ensure that Makoto can't get her offense going, because he doesn't want that. A smart block of the cross-up Psycho Crusher there for Kevin. But Jerron with a very strong start here, a healthy life lead. Kevin gets uh, so he's like, why dashes. are you in my air, you know, and had an answer to that really good read. Yeah. Nice. And that, that, like we were saying before, Makoto's mobility with that dash, she can push to the corner so quickly. Absolutely. And Jerron takes a round, and Kevin is one round from being eliminated here. Let's see if he can uh, keep his momentum going and uh, keep his, you know, make, keep making his mark, basically. He's definitely making his mark, regardless of how this uh, tournament exhibition turns out. Oh, there's the focus. This is going to be big for Kevin. This will that, definitely getting be huge. that combo right there is going to give him a lot, a lot of momentum. But Jerron, it's like he's putting a stop on There it is. Oh, oh wow. if he had gone for the short version, it would have nailed Bison on the throw. But he does not get that. The thing about Bison is that once he gets those like, center kicks, uh, you know, into play, and he ends up knocking you down, you're just, just like, wow, just get off me. Scissor kick prison. Scissor kick you know, prison, absolutely. They call it that for a reason. Locked down all day. Unless you know the right counter for a deck, because there are actually, if you have the read on the maximum range, you actually can stop that thing. Yes. Gotta be careful here. So he actually got that and really nice hit confirmed. Here's the scissor. And we have someone in the audience saying, <laughs> See, they, they recognize, they recognize. It. Now that that situation right there, where Kevin can back dash from the scissor kick, that's going to be what he wants to get. Yes. To score that knockdown and deal some big damage. Wow. There it is. So Kevin gets eliminated. I'll give him a round of applause. Most great definitely. Great performance. Yeah. Really great performance. We have to go through a substantial amount of our Arcadia's members, but you know what? He is going out with a mark. Absolutely.
And now we've got Lucky D up next. A guy that is a hometown hero for yes, sure. Absolutely. He was a hometown hero when I actually first came out to the tournament events and down in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, he actually went against a number of the players. Lucky D actually making his mark against uh, Kate Rath yep. and also against Team Spooky's men. Really great showing. I always enjoy seeing uh, Lucky play. He's a really nice guy overall and an extraordinary Dawson player. And that's the thing, you say, you know, really nice guy. He is people don't I don't think people understand exactly how nice he is. He knows everyone. That's true. Whenever yeah. anyone, like, I, I, you know, I travel with him because yes. we, we hang out together and we go to a tournament and everybody comes up to him and they're like, hey, you're Lucky D, right? And, you know, he's like, oh, hey, you know, nice to see you. Absolutely. He's not, you know, jaded. He's not, um, you know, very down to earth. Very down to earth. That's a very good way of putting it. And here he's got his Dawson at the ready. Um, and it's going to come down to whether or not he can keep Bison out. You know, the thing is, uh, having watched Lucky against a number of people, he clearly does have extraordinary matchup experience. Um, going against some of the players, he, he's, he's just very good at reading people. Yes, he's, really he's good. very seasoned yes. um, in the metagame, in yeah. not just necessarily knowing his character, but also knowing the, um, the, the players that he's playing against and, and learning patterns and recognizing patterns. Most importantly is his composure, which another thing is a key component with lot of players, especially even for this, it's an exhibition matter, is that when the things are not going your way, you know, is that you just can't let it get to you. you right. allow that mental guard break to get to you. Yeah. Uh, because then at that point it's all over. He, um, like we said before, he's had uh, good performances in the past, yes. but a lot of times he seems to sort of get right to the cusp of where he's going to, you know, get top 8 or top 16 or do really, really well, and he just, he comes up short ever so slightly. Um, so I, I always love the way he uses the yoga, the yoga tower, you know, there's very few people that expect he does use that, other than Afro Crow, you know. He definitely, you know, he has a really good style for putting it to play. He doesn't just do it for trolling. He does it for, you know, for transition purposes, to evade a lot of moves, much like Cody would do in Alpha 3, you know. Definitely very solid. And now it's interesting, uh, the transition of the matchup here. Makoto, who wants to be in your face and, yes. you know, stay in on you, whereas Dawson wants to keep you out. And it's funny how the pace of the match changes so dramatically. It's night and day. It's, uh, and it's also interesting to see Jerron make these adjustments and be able to say, oh, okay, well, you're trying to keep me out. Yeah. I can I can get in on you when you're not trying to get in on me. Which is exactly what he just did right there, and he just got himself in the corner. Of course, that doesn't really mean much for Lucky because Lucky's basically got Dawson, and just like he can easily just keep him off the limbs, and he's basically doing that. You know, and there's not... that yoga tower you were talking about. Exactly. As he went into the scissor kick, he can just get it. That was an awesome conversion right there Big on Hyrule's part. Big combo. Lucky trying so, to uh, shake that one off, yep. and he's going to make his recovery. Really good use of the, uh, the uh, scissor cut prison there, and then basically to convert that, oh, because you know, basically knowing that at any point, Lucky could just basically just negate the move and then get his offensive momentum going. Right. So, Short is a good it's just amazing. This matchup, wow. this matchup is probably tough for Dalsim. Yes. Um, but at the same time, it's tough for Bison to get in when Dawson is at his best. Definitely so is. It's, it's, it's an interesting sort of cat and mouse game where one character will be in control for you know, a significant amount of time, and then all of a sudden one thing will just turn the momentum like that. And um, you know, like we, we, we've seen that. We've seen, like you said, it's night and day, seeing that transition from where Dawson's in control to where Bison's in control. Right. And um, you know, Dan just sort of needs to cross his, I'm sorry, Lucky D needs to cross his fingers here. Right. Then he can keep that going. Oh, that's a big See, and, and that actually right there can't be really good for Lucky because he's like, wow, I just can't believe I just got hit by that. Yeah. And now he's gonna basically try to do something here. Good anti-airs, good teleports. Very good. Wow. I think, going, and I think Dan was going for uh, some sort of punish there. I think he was looking for a get out of jail free card right there. Wow. So that was a great hand for uh, it. Very, very good move. This could be match point for EMP Hyro. Dan's got an uphill battle here if he, uh, if he wants to make his comeback. But he, uh, like we were saying, he's awesome. He can definitely do it. He it just can go needs to either slow way. it down and put it at his pace. Yep. All he basically just needs to do is just get, get in the right position, be able to keep Bison out. Uh, right now, he's been struggling to do that. He's having a very tough time dealing against the scissor cook pressure and just um, Hyrule's overall pokes. Yeah. Oh, and he's done. That's that looks like that's going to do it. Didn't expect uh, Lucky to really go out that quick. Uh, me neither. Uh, 
Again, it's the it's the that back and forth between Bison and Dawson, and I think Dan just couldn't ever get his momentum going. He couldn't ever keep Bison out. Um, Jerron doing a very good job of getting in and staying in. There's not too many uh, uh, proficient Bison players left. You know, we knew for a while that uh, originally Jago used to actually play Bison. Yep. Of course, we know uh, then we had Yikes. Yikes basically uh, had, had the primary goal. Actually, did great work for himself back then, and then of course we have Happy Medicine. Yep. Who, uh, I'm sure if he wasn't at season's meetings, he would actually would have been here to come out, and it would have been nice for him to see him play. You know, maybe as an honorary EMP member or whatnot. <laughs> Always good to see him play. I also know there's another guy from around here um, who goes by the name of Mike D, who's yes. a very, very skilled bison. Um, he has shown at you know our local tournaments, he sort of has this unique flavor of pressure where instead of just throwing scissor kicks, he uses psycho pressure with great effect. And he's able to hit confirm all of bison's combos and most people end in scissor kick with a psycho pressure that not only deals a little bit more damage, but it also leaves you right in your opponent's face and leaves you in a very good position to keep the pressure going. It looks like we have, we have KDZ going against Weak Sauce. No, KDZ is standing off to the side. Oh, okay. We have Weak Sauce against Zero. I, I was about to say, really? KDZ's coming back? <laughs> He's like, just going to jump in? Special character? <laughs> It's like, those, um, it's like those time release characters back now then. Now we're seeing Honda from Weak Sauce. Y you know, which is not something I would have expected. I, I'm, I'm a bit it, shocked by this decision. I didn't even know he really dabbled with I, Honda. This is the first that I have to admit, as much as I've seen him in a lot of tournaments, that I've never seen him play Honda. So this is a very interesting choice. The thing that we know about that, you know, is that Honda has a very, very good uh, offensive game. Yes. Once he establishes that initial hit, he puts his hands on you, next thing you know, you've lost a substantial amount of health. Weak Sauce actually may have some type of technology that we haven't seen before, so it's gonna be really interesting seeing how he's gonna turn out, because I expect him to actually go up as a primary character, at least a guy. Now, I, I talked to him at, um, I wanna say it was after Evo, he was kind of feeling down on Sagat, and he was saying, really? yeah, you know, I'm, not, I'm not really liking Sagat anymore. He was saying he was going to pick someone else up. Interesting. Um, like I said, I haven't really I haven't really talked to him since then. I'm wondering if perhaps this is where he's going to stay, or if maybe this is just specific to this matchup. Well, you know what? If he basically wanted to get some battle testing, this is the perfect atmosphere and yeah. environment to be able to do that. So let's see how things turn out. Now, if he can get, yeah, I hear Craig saying in the audience, headbutt him out of there. Mm -hmm. If he can get those um, anti-air EX headbutts, he will definitely be able to oh, knock absolutely. down Bison from jumping in on him. It's so quick, and it has great invincibility. Um, now, time, time is not on his side here. Yeah, and, and also positioning isn't really working too well for him, because you, well, that was good, he got his headbutt. Is that usually a Honda can go and establish that, that low roundhouse, you know, that has a, a broad that amount of range. I don't no. think that's going to work. I think he was counting on it, but that, I basically just comes to the Hail Mary right there. Wow, oh, really? Man. Really, we, we just do headbutts? <laughs> well, I mean, at that point, he only had about five yeah, seconds you know, left. He, he had to make something happen. He had to do happen. something there. I wonder if, uh, I, I don't think he would have had enough time. I don't Probably think he can head that full screen into Super. Yeah. But, uh, so Weak Sauce off to a good start, actually, so far, 13 seconds into the game, and actually has a pretty decent home lead. Uh, and as Honda, that makes a big difference, because he's just going to sit down back. And there he goes, there goes that moveset that I was talking about, which was basically when he went ahead and hit connect with uh, that jab. Now it looks like that Weak Sauce may actually get this round. And Weak Sauce, another player, we mentioned Dan, able to sort of read players and, you know, good at the metagame. Rob is another player who's very skilled in being able to read his opponent and learn what they're going to do. Absolutely. And he takes the so round. He takes like the we round. said, he, he has that first round against Jerron's Bison, and then he, he figures it out. He knows what he's got to do, and he makes it happen. And now, let's see the, uh, the adjustment to the adjustment yes. and see what Jerron now has in store. Both yeah. characters kind of sort of just still feel each back. other out. Stay, know, yeah, staying back, they both want to, you know, dictate the pressure at right. their pace. Um, but it's it's just very strange to see Rob playing I, Honda. I I'm still getting over it. He's, I, I'm he's doing a fantastic I'm dreaming job. Right don't don't get me wrong. No, he's doing he a great is. job. He's, he knows what he's doing with Honda. I just I'm very confused by the decision. It's, it's good to, it's good to see when players can branch out. We definitely know there have been players in the past that branch out. You know, shout out to Santa <laughs> Kelly in particular, who has initially gone through a, a, a very broad range of character crises, going from Viper to Sagat to Candy and then back again. Um, you know. 
maybe Weeks also will end up staying with him. Maybe at some point, maybe he'll get his confidence back up and perhaps he'll revisit Sagat. But for right now, he's doing very well for himself against Ron. But for this particular round, not so much. Two EX headbutts in a row, gets the chip, and it does do a lot of chip. Don't underestimate that. So, this is a decision point for Rob. Is yes. he gonna stick with Honda, or is he gonna go somewhere else? And that is something that I am curious about. It's like, oh, he's going so right he into decided, it. Uh, he's made yeah, he's his decision. He's not gonna put too much stall on it, just says, I'm gonna run it. He has, he, I think he had already made that decision. He just wanted a second to sort of yeah. gain his composure. And I respect that. Out of the corner, that's a good place for, uh, for Honda to be. He's got a full screen behind him, he can walk away. Yes. There's the EX headbutt, that's what he needs to be doing more of. Every jump that he needs to hit that EX headbutt as an anti X. It does so much damage, yes. and it's so discouraging. It to, really is. To stop and that's side. Side. No, he said, what are you jumping for? <laughs> what are you jumping throw. for? Now, it's, it looks like he's got a little more than a, than, oh, oh. Yeah, the jab. I was gonna say he might just start going for headbutts. That chip damage is very, very powerful on the headbutt. Yes. And Weeksaw's showing, again, that adjustment yeah. uh, to Jaron's play style, figuring out, you know, what he's gotta do, what he's gotta stop doing, and, uh, you know, again, it, it's bizarre to see the pace shift so quickly. It really has. To go from, you know, Jaron controlling to Weeksaw's controlling, right. and, you know, back and forth. And it shows a great mark of a player, you know, especially when you're going from someone that you've proficiently used for so long, and now you're jumping another character, and then you're able to go toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with someone like uh, like Hyro. Yeah, Hyro, who's been, been playing Bison for a long time. He's, you know, he's been, it, he knows the ins and outs, I'm sure. Yep. He's been going way back. He's been playing for as long as the days of uh, ST and also CBS series. Um, and he continues to do that in Street Fighter Four. Dictator sort of ever present in the Street Fighter series. Always present, always, always doing the uh, the Suzuki Kick Prison, but yep. not quite as bad um, in the other games. But definitely, definitely hurts here. Yeah, hurts very much in Street Fighter Four. So Weak Sauce at a bit of a disadvantage here. He's going to want to get some just, offense going. Just but, ooh, a little bit, I would say. <laughs> A very tough position to be in. It really Good is, job. but very you know what? Smart. All it takes is one more wow. combo like that, and he can easily just end up sub, even though he basically has a sliver of health. But Pyro says, nope, I'm gonna take this round. That scissor kick is just so quick, it's, it's hard so to good. react to. No matter how good you are, you gotta, you gotta, you know, it, you need to predict it. You can't yes. just see it and then say, oh, okay, I'm gonna no. jump or I'm gonna punish it with something. There's no random throwing out buttons. If you do a button check, you risk paying for it. getting counter hit and thus losing more damage. Yes. So Rob sort of slowing down a little bit, yes. keeping uh, keeping Hyro out, and now he's got Hyro with his back to the wall, trying to push him farther and farther. That's where Honda wants Bison to be, and that's where Bison wants Honda to be. Yep. Mm -hmm. Both characters can generate a lot of damage off of the corner. Gets the grab. Uh, and that's, and that's what I was waiting for. I will call that the my boss <laughs> because he it's says, a, you know what? Get out my air. I am taking this. A good Whoa. block on the cross. Very good block. He has headbutt. And now he's just got to stop just a little bit because you know what? That momentum that he just had could easily go back into uh, Hyrule's favor. He's got. He, you can see he's trying to stay out of scissor kick range is. because getting a little excited lockdown. because he knows that he definitely wants to take this. There it is. And there it is. A big win for Rob. He needs to be able to keep that going. It would have been very disheartening for Boston oh, to lose 2-0 twice in a row. Absolutely. Our wonderful Red Hope only got one more leg to I'm serious. They pull off the other it's three. Really good stuff for Rob. Life. Thank you. Here we go again. Let's see if Boston can uh, stay ahead. Or if there's going to be some sort of tie-up here. Let's see if they can get some momentum going. Yeah, they got some momentum going. Yeah, they got some momentum going. They're going to tie it up for New York. I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. Let's see if Boston can stay ahead or if New York can tie it up. I suppose that's a better way to put it. And there's that, that slow pace while they, they're both trying to get into their groove, trying to find the right spacing. Right. Honda is able to do um, the jab headbutt and it's safe against Bison. Yeah, but, uh, and, and, and the thing is that frame advantage is something that a lot of the experienced runner players definitely don't take for granted. That's why you don't see them tend to blind check because they just don't want to lose all that health. <laughs> right. As a lot Very of people, nice read there. as a lot of people say, you know, think of think of your health as a currency. Yes. You know, and you got to sort of pay for the moves that you're doing, and you know, Rob being very stingy with that health, saying I'm not gonna, you know, lose it to 
you know, making bad decisions. As well as the meter management, because that's something that you also tend to see is that usually the meter, um, that's something that basically you have to consider. A lot of times, you will see a lot of players that they'll, they'll lose rounds because they don't actually waste that meter. They actually have it sitting there. All you have to do is get a good opening, and right. that can easily just turn the, uh, the match in your favor. Now, I mean, it's easy for us to say because we're Chun players, oh, and her super is amazing. Yeah. We just burn it. <laughs> we just burn it all. So there's an Ochi throw. He's got about 20 seconds to make up a lot of damage. I'm just not sure if he has enough I don't time. Think, I don't really think he's going to have enough time to really get this match. Definitely not after that attack. And Hyro basically says, you know what, I'm taking this. Replay Weak Sauce one round away from being eliminated here, but not going without a fight. Definitely not. So I read off with a very good start, letting you know, hey, here's a taste of my boot. Hope you enjoy that. <laughs> Hyro now uh, doing as much work as Kevin Tech did. Absolutely. And it's always a pleasure, you know, watching Hyro play. Very, very down to earth individual. Also, much like Lucky Lee, actually very nice, very humble, laid back. Not really one to tend to pop off. He tends to do it a little bit on the milder side. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it's Marvel, so yes, you, you can't blame the guy. Yes. Everybody has to, or else it's not, uh, it's not Marvel. Exactly. So Rob hitting that focus focus crumple early on in the round, going into hands. I oh now and that's the move we haven't seen actually the whole entire exhibition. Stand round house. Standing roundhouse. He's only hit it I think once before this. It's just such a good move. You yeah, know? it controls got, a very good amount of space. Very long reach and it hits low, which a lot of people are not ready for. Us chum players tend to get hit by this. <laughs> We're busy wiggling back and forth. Yes. There's another focus. And there he goes. Great move for there. Rob. So he's going. And wow, Hyro had an answer for that right away. Ooh, tough break for Rob. Yes. Gets tagged by the Psycho Crusher. And there we go, it's Kyo off camera, basically getting hype for her crew members there. And now up next we got Weirdo Neo. So we're gonna see, I would imagine, Jury versus Bison. But again, yes. we've been, we've seen some bizarre character selections. Rob not using Sagat and Sanford not using Sagat. Absolutely. So I, I would imagine we'll see Jury from Neo. I but, would imagine uh, again, so. We can't, we can't guarantee that. I just hope that they don't do any more character surprises and such. I think we had enough work for, uh, for, for one afternoon today. <laughs> we'll be okay, that'll I, do. Yes. Weirdo Neo for Boston. He's just so solid with this. Very, very consistent. Very, very solid player. Also a nice guy. Definitely knows his data. Not one to be taken lightly. And it, it's funny you say he's a nice guy. Um, I actually know him to be more of sort of a jokester. You know, he's he's yeah, always sort he's of a prankster. He's he's trolling. He'll yeah. be he'll be you know popping off, but not in a mean way, yes. in, a, in a comedic way. Yeah, he's a prankster. Stuff. He definitely he definitely has the jokes. And there we go. He does go for Jerry. Right. So that is what we what we that's were what we came here for. That's exactly. what we want to see. You know, and the stream monster definitely want to see that. I hope you guys are enjoying. Sitting here with Brandy here at Guts 2012 in Boston. First big major put together by Lucky D and Jamie York. If you guys and stuff are actually on Twitter, please make sure you uh, are tweeting it up, letting your friends know how awesome this event is because it is definitely one that I had the pleasure of coming here and maybe talking to you this evening. Uh, it's a great event. It's, it's a great time and we're still only getting started. We still got two top eights that are going to be and very excited. And hopefully we'll be able to do that as well because it's definitely going to be a really great matchup to, uh, to see how those guys go ahead and And now what's interesting about this is a lot of, like I said, a lot of these players are in the top eight. Yes. So this is sort of like a preview of the top eight. Um, but it'll be it'll also be interesting to see if perhaps we see, you know, um, Craig play Lucky D or if we see um, you know, Hero play uh Kramor, you know. Right. Matchups like that is really where that's gonna differ from this. Oh absolutely. So Jury it, ooh, misses the cross up there on the cycle crusher, but Jury is going to have to use her fireballs to keep Bison out. And she's got such good buffs now in 2012. You know, she has a lot more moves that actually put her at frame advantage, and it ties into that fireball to actually just allow her to get that pressure. Um, right now, Hyrule's just not trying to hear better. And now, oh, hey, that, wow. was really that, good. Was that was a great grab with the Feng Shui engine. And now it's time so now to see what he can time. do. There it is, he does and not there go. It Weirdo video. Wow. <laughs> Very good read, got the scoop, went into his ultra and says, now let's play a game. And let's see if you can guess my, exactly. my mix-ups. It's a 50-50 mix-up, yes. it's so hard to figure out. And Neo, one of the 
you know, few juries that use Ultra 1. I know Juicebox uses Ultra 2. Yes. And Alex Smith uses um, Ultra 2. Yes. Um, Alex Smith, formerly known as Blue Nine. I'm not sure if everybody's ready for that name I transition, don't think so. so I'll throw it out there. Um, I but, don't yeah, think I have about <laughs> I think, you know, he just sort of wants to, once he got picked up by Replay, that was when he made that change to be Alex Smith instead of Blue Nine. Um, I don't know if he's still using that or maybe it was just one tournament, who knows. Uh, but Hyro doing doing a lot of work here. And taking I, the I, I imagine that Hyro was going to be able to do this as an answer back to all the work that Kevin Tech basically did. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so great choice by Triforce maybe to put him in there so that way, you know, he can answer back against, uh, you know, Team uh, Boston uh, to let him know, you know what, hey, we still got some tools and stuff left, you know? Right. And it's, it's interesting to think about um, how important the order is here. Yes, absolutely. Because if Hyrule had been on anchor, and there had been, you know, someone from Boston who can deal with Bison really well for whatever reason, you know, what if that Honda pick wound up working out, you know, paying off in spades yes. for Rob, then they'd be in a lot of trouble. And here we go, here's the Feng Shui engine again. He's gonna go in. It's just so fast. It's She's so hard very to guess fast and is just so much more proficient. When she originally was introduced to Street Fighter 4, she wasn't quite as solid as she is now. But as time went on, Capcom made a substantial amount of upgrades. Initially, she got nerfed, and you know, apparently, I guess there was a lot of outcry. And wow, that's a big combo. We're oh. seeing Widow Neal taking advantage of that huge yes. damage, those huge buffs that were actually given to her. Really good tool set. And again, those fireballs just doing an excellent oh, job man, of keeping they, Jerome they're annoying. Because I'm pretty sure that low fireball will still hit Bison in the yes. scissor kick. You can't just do it. Widow throw. definitely is aware of that, and he's done a really good job mixing up, much like the way Sagat was doing this high-low mix-up game. All right, tough mix-up there. Wow. Yes, thanks, Gam. Cute Cute always, uh, always being loud. Oh, always a pleasure. Making sure that New York is heard Making from sure as well. Making sure that New York is heard. We got. Always. I think. I think Boston is probably better represented in quantity. Yes. And uh, and Q trying to make up for that in quality. Yes. Yeah, she makes up for it just by herself. <laughs> She's very loud. She's got a loud voice, able to you know cheer her her friends and teammates Absolutely. on. Much love she, for you, though, but yes. She is on Empire, right? She is okay. on Empire, um, yes. kind of officially, I would say. <laughs> but, um, you know, her and I, we will go way back to the time of Chinatown Fair, the original Chinatown Fair. So Ooh, it's always Neo, uh, always good to see her basically playing. Neo missing an anti air there, and Bison able to tap Oh my god. Big damage. Weird old basic. Wow. Oh my god. They're just, they're just going at it right now. It is total chaos. Oh wow. my goodness. Did you expect that? Wow. Did you that expect that? I definitely did not. Very, very that was close. Awesome. Comes right down I, the wire. I, I don't think that if that had to be reenacted, I don't think that he'd be able to do that again. No. Very good uh, made skills on his part. Yes, definitely. I think if that had gone, if he was just a pixel if or two it was a the other away, way, it, it would have chipped his, him out. Yes, absolutely. Oh, he goes for the counter, but he does not get it. Now managing to uh, keep Neo locked down in the corner. And Neo gets the grab, he gets out. Looks like he's gonna save his ultra. He's gonna try to jump out there. That's that quick That reaction. was a very good response to him. Unbelievable. Weird so, Neo with a good block there in the corner. This could now be he's gonna go match point. And now here's that mix-up again. Oh, and I thought that was gonna teleport. connect. Very good teleport, did it just in the nick of time. Yeah. Oh! Wow! Pyro so taking Hyro is answering back for Empire Arcadia. Pyro now working on an OCV against Boston, and it comes down to Gridman. Yes, and as we know, Gridman is an extraordinary Viper player, not one to be taken lightly, and it has a totally different preset than uh, Wolfro and Latif. Very, very extraordinary. Yeah. There, I think those are probably the three, the three big Vipers in America. You got your great man. You got your. List. I'm sorry, you got in order probably. You know, Wolf Crown is the most well known. Latif yes. making a big name for himself at Evil last year. Yes. But you know, people should not be sleeping on Gridman. I, I is, definitely didn't sleep on Gridman when I went against him. <laughs> And they said, round one, you're fighting Gridman. I just kind of put my head down. <laughs> uh, I, I said a prayer, and, uh, and I said, may God be with me, and that was it. And then we went to battle. 
So, no, he's definitely a very, very strong player. Always a pleasure to be able to see Green Man come out. And he did very well. I mean, like I said, a summer game six uh, this year. Um, and actually taking over for us. So, yeah. you know, he's definitely establishing himself as, uh, you know, basically we say as the four horsemen of the Viking players. <laughs> four horsemen? Four horsemen. Yeah. Who would be the other three? I know so, we've got let's see. So Wolf we got, Crone, we've got uh, Wolf Crone, Latif, um, Red Man, and I think there was one other player that used to uh, play Viper. Not reading the bow. I know, uh, Flash Metroid? Yes, there did we go. Did he play Viper? I know, I mean, he's... For a time he did, and then, and then all of a sudden he decided he wanted to play Chun. He's playing Chun now. Supposedly he's playing Chun. I, I think he was trolling. I think he was trolling. If he's playing Chun, I don't agree with that decision. Yeah, I think he was trolling everyone there. But anyway, we've got a very important match here for Boston. They need to be able to take this, and Fred needs to be able this, to beat. This would be important in order for uh, Team uh, Massachusetts to be able to stay on top. And now again, just those feints we were talking about before. That, you know, people say Viper like execution for a reason. It is absolutely taxing. It is demanding. You need to spend so much time practicing. And Craig showing that he's put in the time. He's put in the work. It's very solid. You can't play on autopilot with her. I mean, to an extent, you could. But when you're a tournament player in a high level uh, stakes like this, going against someone as solid as EMP High Row, you know, you definitely need to know what you're doing. You need to be able to convert. Most importantly, to adapt at all times. Right now, this is pretty much going out of the way, but Hyrule basically just took that first game. It was close, though. Both players really you know, well. bringing their A game and playing well, yeah. but uh, Hyrule right. just gets that last hit there, and then just to take right, the so round. Gridman opened up very well, starting off getting the first damage, and has already taken off 40% of Hyrule's health. A lot of pressure from Viper, and those those wow. flame kicks and the you know, seismos, they're able to you know, keep Bison at bay. The flame yeah. kick can keep him down, and it, and it can so keep him stuff. guessing. Yes, it just, hurts. it just hurts so much. Yeah, but the problem is that I believe that the Psycho Crusher won't be hit by the um, seismo. Right. So, Gridman is going to need to, uh, you know, Mix it up. Just keep it. Keep just it a little going. bit. Just a little bit. And he did that. Burn kick and a nice up. answer back against EMP High Row. Those burn kick to mix tie us up. One, one. The Third burn kick's able to able to keep keep High Row guessing. It's not just a matter of knowing setups. He needs to do that. Craig can just alter it at the you know the drop of a hat and it'll hit left. It'll hit right. Nice. Very nice. And what I like about him is, we mentioned this the point, is to be able to mix up. Most players tend to get so caught up in the setup, they crack a lot of stuff in training mode, they hit up the lap, and that's all they do. You know, and that's not truly the mark of a, of a very solid player. Um, it's actually to be diverse, and Craig is definitely demonstrating that right now. And there we go, big damage Wow, for and he got the unsecondable knockdown right there, so it's really Ooh. good. And, uh, very just in the nick of time. Very, very good read. Good. Awesome. Job I'm not sure if that, was, uh, if that I, was a good read or I, a lucky break, but either way, he'll take it. It could have been both. Craig needs to take the first match down. Getting some nice cheers. job by Craig. Getting some cheers from the locals. Yes. And a pat on the back from Lucky D. And Craig, Craig taking his time, taking yeah, a sip of water. Taking his time, a sip of that water. <laughs> Probably sponsored by, uh, by by somebody local here. Replay. Yep. Replay. Replay water. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if they have their own brand of they water. They might. They might actually have that at one point. There's big damage catching that anti-air uh, crumple. Yes. I'm sorry, not crumple. I suppose the focus, and then following up with the stand roundhouse. Viper mm -hmm. in bad shape there. Jerron able to take that round. <laughs> Shout out to Q. Actually set up getting the head stops. Oh. You know, some people would actually get mad and stuff. They'd be here that, you know, they would yeah. actually be instantly reaching out for the head there. <laughs> and I mean, it's one thing to, you know, it, it's going to happen no matter what you yes. do. There's going to be people popping off. There's going to be people being loud, especially yeah. at this level of play. Um, and, you know, some people are able to just keep it consistent, keep it solid. And Absolutely. some people just know it's coming and say, and say, you know, I'll just, uh, you know, I, I, I don't need that. I'm just going to wear headphones and I'll be yeah, okay. You know, and the thing is, you know, me in particular, you know, coming back and being used to this type of atmosphere, like, I actually miss it. So hearing guys like Triforce or Q, you know, going off, you know, to me, to me it feels like home, you know? <laughs> it feels like home. It's a, actually, if we were sitting in an atmosphere and everyone was doing golf claps and such, I would not feel in my element. Exactly. You know? It's got to be loud. It's got to be, you know, in your face. Absolutely. 
like we said about, you know, in particular about Marvel, you gotta pop off or it's not Marvel. Absolutely. Um, you know, Street Fighter, somewhat more respectful, but the crowd's still very, very much getting into it and, you know, giving some trash talk back and forth. Yes. So now we're, we're at 1-1. One, one. Oh, Viper manages to get Bison into the corner. Getting it. Big damage. Very big damage Wow. There. There's the stun. I don't know what just happened there. Big, big damage. You know, that, that looked a lot like my round when I went against Gridman, you know? Getting that stun, like I we said before, stun, getting yeah. stunned is so crucial. You just don't crucial. want it. You just don't want it. Viper obviously wants it. Greg yes. definitely wants it. And he is establishing that. Jaron is going to need to make sure that he keeps his wits about him after yes. getting that stun. Don't let it get to him. Yeah, it's you know, a good EX psycho there. He doesn't tend to get, uh, he doesn't wow. tend to get broken, but... Excellent reaction. That was Manages a very good get with part. The, Hit him with the uh, Seismo yes. and reacting with the Ultra. Very good connection right there. And he's just, he's just got mix-up for days. Yes. It just seems like he has this super huge novel of mix-ups. Big damage and here. It's going to be an important mix-up. for Craig here. All it will take is one more hit, and Craig will be in there, and wow! I think Craig lost that. Craig did lose that. Uh, that was, so I wasn't even sure. sure. Yes. I had to wait until I heard I, Viper with, yeah. the, with the scream. Yeah, she's like, oh no, Molly! Oh. I, I had to wait and listen for that before I knew who actually won that. It was too close. Yeah, she, she it would have been extremely exciting if that had been a double KO, although that would have given Zidman the win. So both players, again, at match point here. It is exhibition points this, for this New York. almost feels like watching a top eight. Yes. Like we said, it's it's going to be this is very nice, similar because yes. of the, the caliber of players. Absolutely. Oh, we got a, an important situation here for Craig. And that'll do it. Oh. EFB high roll. Empire is on his feet now, as they tell Craig. Have a seat, sir. Please have a seat. New York manages to take the exhibition. They're going home with the money. Oh, wow. Unbelievable job to EMP, Jermon Grayson, aka High Roll. CVing Boston. Unbelievable. It was, it was good to beat every single player Boston has. Yes. You know, and, and that, I know that couldn't have been easy for High Roll. You know, he definitely had a lot of strong players there, but it basically shows again a mark of a true player, a mark of an OG player that says, you know what, I still, I still got some good stuff here. Right. Right. An empire uh, showing, you know, d what Kevin Tech did, I think, was very important to the way the rest of the set went. He yes. set a very quick pace, and the fact that he beat three players in rapid succession yes. is going, I, I think that is part of what energized um, New York to be able to sort of answer with an OCV of their own. So it's, it, uh, I'm curious if Kevin hadn't gotten three wins in a row, right. if New York would have had that sort of that momentum that, that, you know, they say, I think it was Bruce Lee who said, always give your 